for us to take the health segment this Tuesday right here on Wake Up Nigeria. And on Health Today, we're joined by Dr. Perfecta Osaru. Now, she is an alternative medicine practitioner and she's a women's health advocate. She's also the author of the book, Flow Freely. Now, it's key that I mention this because of our topic. Today, we're discussing the role of diet and nutrition and uh, how it plays with regards to our period palaver and pain. Hmm. So, when we hear, we want to just change the channel, but I insist that you wait and hear her out. Why? Because there are loads of old wives' tales, uh, loads of different strategies women have been using to cope over hundreds of years, and we're here to find out more. Welcome back, Dr. Perfecto. Thank you for having me. All right, so now nutrition uh, has been sort of connected to that time of the month with all the tales you heard from our parents. Oh, don't eat sugar at that time of the month. Oh, if you eat sweet things, your waist will pain you. How true is this? Uh, and does it actually make sense? Okay, right. Um, it does make sense in okay. the sense that eating sugar, excessive sugar in a sense, causes inflammation. Okay. And that's one of the leading causes of pain. But now, is that true for everyone? Because some people would beg to differ that I don't take sugary things, mm -hmm. I've tried to stay off it, but then I still experience that. Mm -hmm. That's just to reiterate the fact that different folks, like different people can experience different things because there are different period pain symptoms. Mm. So uh, the symptoms now uh, that many might not have known, it's the pain doesn't just resonate around the mid-region for some people. It goes to other parts of the body, am I right? Right, it does. So... Uh, how do we apply the right nutritional plans, meals, to make sure that uh, we feel less pain? Okay, um, let me start with the fact that there's this popular quote, let food be your medicine and let yeah. medicine be your food. Okay. So people have often time now thinking as a slogan, just let food be your medicine, let medicine be your food. But what's the core of that quote? It's to state the fact that you are what you eat. Mm. But then if you eat a lot of refined foods, it doesn't make you a more refined person. Okay. So people need to understand that if they have to always opt for fine foods, they are setting themselves up for inflammation, which will not lead to pain. Mm. So. What, what uh, would you advise someone who is going through this on a regular basis to eat right now? Okay, so I would say that um, you should understand that digestion changes throughout your menstrual cycle. So it would be better for you to, you know, live in tune with it, understand your body and then track it so that you can understand the bowel changes that happens with what you consume during your cycle. I know for a fact that, um, you know, when you make juices or smoothies, you know, you're eating fruits and vegetables. Everyone has advised, yes, take fruits and vegetables. Okay. Are these helpful or are they not? Okay, so taking fruits and vegetables in general is good. But then when it comes to ladies, they need to understand that there's a place for cold and raw foods and that has like a negative impact sort of in when it comes to period and period pain issues. Because now we take um, cold and raw foods. Let me now explain that. Raw foods, when I ask you like what's the thermal nature of a fruit that is like cucumber or cabbage, yeah. the thermal nature is cold. Okay. So that's a cold food. And that's, a, and, that's, that, and that's just raw in its own state. So it's not just a cold food. It's now, then you, people would now even now make that out of smoothie and mm. put ice in it, like you just said. Yeah. So they're just taking just raw foods. They're taking it in the cold state. And that on its own creates stagnation. Okay, so let me take this. Let me take it back. Most people make smoothies mm. and store them in the fridge. Right. So you're saying if, for instance, I have cabbage and cucumber in a smoothie, mm. I'm not taking it in its original state. I'm taking it in a cold state. Yes, you are. And this is not okay? It's not okay. Oh, wow. It's not okay for ladies to consistently consume foods that are cold mm. and raw because that creates stagnation. And all they want when it's that time of the month is for blood to flow freely. Okay. So, and for blood to flow freely, everything has to do in just like flow. Basically, mm. you want warming foods. You want things that make it flow. But when you're, when you're creating stagnation with what you're taking because it's supposed that um, fruits and vegetables are healthy, yeah. you don't know what part applies to you, then you're creating the stagnation that leads to So pain. you know we have to break down that word stagnation now. Right. Um, stag stagnant. Right. How are fruits and vegetables stagnant? Um, it's not just the fruits and vegetables. It's how you use it. Okay. Now you consume that with ice in it that's in its cold state. Okay. So basically blood is neutral. Mm. And everything that has to do with the uterus deserves warmth, needs warmth. Like um, I said something before, um, you, don't, um, you don't grow a baby in a fridge. Mm. You don't grow a baby in a fridge. 
So if a baby is premature, they take the baby into what? An incubator. Exactly. Yeah. That's warmth. So yeah. everything that has to do with the uterus deserves warmth, needs warmth. So when we okay. consistently not just consume foods mm -hmm. and then we also stay in places that are filled with, you know, like air conditioned oh. places and cold and all of that, wow. we create this, um, this sort of, uh, what, what, that's Nigerian word to use, like old up or something mm. like that. So that leads up to that stagnation of that. Mm. To the pain. Okay, so in that case, warmer foods would be more beneficial. So right. there is another old wife's tale, you know, taking pepper soup, taking hot <sighs> peppered stew and the like. Is that more helpful for women at that time of the month? It is helpful. But more than that, there's this, um, you know, there's cloves and all of that. that they cloves, put in. Yes. yeah. They yeah. put in pepper soup spice. Yeah. That's an anti-inflammatory herb. Oh, okay. So when you think about the role that has to play mm. in the soup, then it helps with the period pain. So warm drinks, warm foods, right. good, cold drinks, even when, uh, well, cold fruits, right. even when they're good fruits for you, might not be the best at might that time be of the, the best. month. You might want to steam up your veggies, okay. instead of taking them in their cold and raw state. Okay. So now, let's talk a bit about what actually causes the pain in the pelvic area um, during that time of the month. For someone who's watching who doesn't understand what women are going through, what exactly is going on um, how is it that food affects that area? Okay, so um, when it comes to that time of the month, the hormone um, prostaglandin that causes the uterus to contract so that okay. it sheds its lining okay. also responds to digestion. Okay. So, and when that happens, it can also, um, when, when ladies consume these foods that are not easy to digest, again, because they're consuming cold and raw things, it turn leads to that stagnation and mm. causes that all pain when it comes to the contraction part. Okay. And then if the food is refined, constantly refined foods, because most ladies complain of cravings around mm. that time. And so instead of them to, what happens is the hormones drop, and so the blood sugar level drops. And then because of that, they start getting sugar cravings and all of that. But then they respond to it by taking refined and fast foods, mm. which can lead to inflammation. But they, what, they, what they're supposed to do is respond to it by eating complex carbs, that's the whole and rich foods, okay. and then eat it smaller meals mm. over time to keep the blood sugar level normal. All right. So it's all about keeping your blood sugar level w normal, all about keeping the mid-region warm, avoiding cold foods, and a few other tidbits you probably find in Dr. Perfecta's book, Flow Freely. Thank you so much for joining us in the month of February. We appreciate you. And... Uh, there is so much more to come right here on Wake Up Nigeria. It's a Tuesday. Stay with us.